Welcome everybody, it's lovely to see so many of you here today and also welcome to everybody listening at, in their various homes and it's so nice to see you all, on the, well the ones that I can see as, they, as it moves around and joining us collectively together in our worship. This is a service of Holy Communion and we are still, like Rob alluded to, in a halfway house. I will still come out and give you communion uh, where you're sat and at the same for the bread and the wine. And again, when we leave, we tend not to gather, be directed by the stewards. So we, we don't sort of group at the back and, and cause people that do not want to get too close to people some anxiety. So we've got to be conscious about how people are living their lives and where they are in that process. And I echo Rob's sentiments. If anybody can help in any way in the church now is especially the time to actually say, I can do that job for you. Because it takes pressure off the small team of stewards that are giving so much of their time and working full time. But I welcome you all here this morning to our service of worship. We pause as we always do. And we gather ourselves knowing that God has called each one of you here this morning. Our call to worship is taken from Micah. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love? Give kindness to walk humbly with your God. So let us do so together in prayer and praise this day. We are singing and the advice is to keep your masks on to protect others around you. But our first hymn is hymn number 24. In singing the faith, all well, the words will be on the screen, but the, the, the hymn is come now is the time to worship. So hymn number 24.
Psalm 78, verses 23 to 29. He gave a command to the clouds above and opened the doors in the sky. He rained down manna for them to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate the food of the mighty ones. He sent them more than enough to eat. He brought the east wind through the sky and by his strength led forth the south wind. He rained down meat on them like dust, birds as numerous as the sand on the seashores. He caused them to fall right in the middle of their camp, all around their homes. They ate until they were full beyond. He gave them what they desired. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Christine. Sometimes it's very difficult to see the blessings that God brings us in our lives. And it has been especially difficult over the last few years. I think there comes a time when we give thanks for what we've got, when we open our eyes to see it. This morning, let us gather together in our homes, in this place, in our hearts and in our minds, united in the body of Christ as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, here we are once again, gathered together in a variety of ways, knowing that you are listening, that you hear our cries, that you understand our anguish, for you are always faithful to your gathered people. We long to pour out our hearts to you, to say that we are indeed thankful. Thankful for one another, thankful for you. And there is always time to give thanks, to reflect on our journey together and to give thanks, even during the times of challenge and hardship The times of tiredness and distress and sadness. To give thanks during the times of unfinished business and uncertainty. Even to give thanks during times of failure and disappointment, heartbreak and loss. Time to invite your Holy Spirit as we shed tears. 
this day, wherever we are. Come, Holy Spirit. Now is the time to move forward. A time to let go. A time to breathe deeply and a time to trust. A time to be held by a God, faithful who cares and loves us, holding us all gently. To move forward within our communities. For stories listened to. Communities held by each one of us in so many different ways with care and confidence. For your kingdom's work in this place. Sometimes unnoticed and very hard to measure. But you know our hopes. From you we cannot hide. So we seek forgiveness for the time when our faith fails, for crosswords, unspoken grudges, forgetting your promise that you are beside us always. For all that is left undone and incomplete. Wherever we are, we bring to you our silent concerns in our hearts and minds. And we set them down before you, Lord. Trusting in renewal and restoration, in mercy and love, in hope and in confidence. So we ask forgiveness now, remembering those times. Let us praise a God who continues to call to us, to walk in God's ways, to share in the work of the kingdom in whatever way we can, however small, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others in our lives. We worship a God of hope and a God of new beginnings. in our different journeys. May we all read the signs of the times with wisdom and with courage, shaped by Jesus Christ, that we may bring hope, faith, and love, and most of all, peace to those to whom we are called to serve. For almighty God, now and always, we will be your people. Amen. Our gospel reading will be shared this morning by Rob. Hear the gospel according to St. John. So when the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor, the, nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate all the loaves of bread you wanted. Do not work for the food that disappears, but for the food that remains to eternal life, the food which the Son of Man will give to you. 
But God the Father has put his seal of approval on him. So then they said to him, what must we do to accomplish the deeds God requires? Jesus replied, this is the deed God requires, to believe in the one whom he sent. So they said to him, then what miraculous signs will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus told them, I tell you the solemn truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but my father is giving you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread all the time. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never go hungry. And the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Thank you, Rob, for sharing that reading that has so much in it. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and went looking for Jesus. Isn't it strange that when you sometimes realize that something is missing? And when you realize that something is missing, that's the very time that you need it most. How many times have you lost something without realizing that you've lost an item? And when the realization dawns that this something is gone, our efforts are increased to find it. Because we know now for certain how valuable it has been to us in the first place. I rediscovered rest and peace on my holiday because of circumstances dictated that I couldn't really do the things I wanted to do. And then I realized it was something that had been missing for some time. I am blessed that in seven days' time you lose me again for another short period of leave before we enter the new Methodist year. And I'm looking forward to rediscovering that peace because I know now how valuable it was. And the people in our readings have realized that Jesus is completely gone. I think it's safe to say that the crowds were single minded. They'd seen enough of Jesus to know what he was offering. Then they wanted more of it. The Sea of Galilee is not a, for those of you I'm sure have been, is not a large body of water, but it is an obstacle for travel. And yet the crowds follow Jesus. They wanted more. Or at least they wanted a repeat performance of that feeding miracle, which happens before the scripture reading we, we heard this morning. They wanted to be sure that they could actually believe what they think they had seen. And such miracles don't exactly lead people to faith. They just say, do it again. Do it a little bit slower so we can make sure that what we're seeing is true. Today, in our society, we're all in search of, of such wonderful items of food spiritually we are in a wilderness of cultural change and challenge literally there are people in the world who are hungry desperate for any food at all hungry each night hoping for provision even in our community and then there are many 
who have all the food they can eat with leftovers. And there will be those who will say to us all, how can anyone still be hungry because there is enough food for everyone in the world? And yet there will be those without who cry, how can you still be hungry? You have had so much already. Could it be that Jesus' words to those following him across the sea so many years ago still have truth for us all today? Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. The first I am statement of Jesus has to have a literal interpretation today. If Jesus is the bread of life, for the truth of that ministry to have any meaningful impact on our lives, one who believes in Jesus Christ will never be spiritually hungry or thirsty and will see the real need in this world. We think back into previous scripture readings. Remember how Jesus revealed to the woman at the well that he is the source of the living water. And the reply of the woman is quite similar. Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. And at the end of that particular meeting, the woman states that a Messiah is coming. And Jesus declares, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. The I am statements often brought trouble to Jesus. After Jesus said, I am the light of the world, the Pharisees ridiculed. And after he said, I am the good shepherd, the crowds denounced him as a mad person, possessed by a demon. And after he declared, I am the resurrection and the life, the case against Jesus was finally made and he was arrested. Jesus so emphatically referred himself as I am, echoing God's name as first he flows to Moses in the burning bush. You tell Israel that I am sent you. And Jesus begins with I am the bread of life, the most basic of our human needs, sustenance, food. And yet the bread that Jesus is talking about is not that kind of food. He just finished the feeding of the 5,000 and it created quite an impression. And that's why so many people are desperate to follow him, to hear more, to see more. And faith often begins like that, something small, but then resonates outwards, just like the ripples of what Jesus said and did that still resonate outwards today, thousands of years later. And if you can believe that Jesus is God's son, then the radical message of John's gospel is the truth that Jesus is the bread of life. Be fed by his love and you will never go hungry. And yet, in our modern culture of social media, there remains many who have not traveled to find Jesus across a sea of their own self-absorbing postmodern needs. In a world, there are many who are damaged by our modern society. Society rejects those who are odd, dysfunctional, those who are different and seen by the world as without worth or value. Some may imagine themselves rejected by God and live without hope. And the culture of our time is marked by a loss of civility, where people are often rejected because of race, of gender, of age, of sexuality, economic or social class. Even being a northerner <laughs> in this wonderful place of Somerset. And just look at the lengths that people go to to avoid rejection or to gain acceptance, to belong, to conform. An entire counterculture of gangs, cults, dress codes and language 
behavior produced by that fear of being rejected or judged by other people. And such rejections often result in anger turned inwards on ourselves or projected outwards onto others. And we've seen on the news recently how many refugees are desperate to come to find something better, something safer. A graphic reminder of the horrible reality of rejection and persecution. However, our faith, our collective faith in this place, in our homes, in this church, calls us to be a community where each accepts the other because we have all been accepted by God without conditions. A community of faith personified by the warm and welcoming love of God and one where no one will experience rejection. We agree to differ, but we resolve to love and we unite together to serve. That's a mission statement worth holding on to, and I'm sure it's been used before, but it's one that echoes the missing truth of the Gospels within modern living. And as the gap between church and social culture starts to widen, we need to support and accept those who become isolated and marginalized. Perhaps a story with a moral may help interpret the power of Christ's love and truth. Family went for a drive on a Sunday afternoon and it was a very pleasant day. They leisurely motor along the country road. But suddenly, the two children in the back seat shout at the father who was driving, Dad, Dad, stop the car, there's a kitten back there by the side of the road. And the father, as fathers do, pretend not to hear because he knows what's coming. But the children continue to plead for the life of this kitten. And then even his wife turns to her husband and says, you've got to go back. And the man, irritated, reluctantly turns the car around and goes back to search for that kitten. And he finds it and bends down to pick it up. And the kitten is tiny, just skin and bones, abandoned, sore-eyed and full of fleas. And as he reaches for it, the kitten with its very last bit of energy bristles, bearing tooth and claw and spitting and lashes out at him, scratching. And he grabs it by the scruff of the neck and carries it back to the car, saying to those inside, don't touch it, it's probably got diseases. And they travel back home in this uneasy silence. And when they arrive, the children give the kitten several baths and lots of warm milk. And then they plead, can we let it stay in the house just for tonight? And tomorrow we will fix up a bed and a couch. Sure, the father mutters under his breath, be my guest, but you must use my bedroom so I can keep an eye on it. And the children fix a really comfortable bed, fit for a queen. And several weeks pass, and one day the father walks in and feels something rub against his leg, and he looks down, and there he sees the cat. And he reaches down, first checking all around him, but no one is watching. And when the cat sees his hand, it does not bear its claws or hiss. Instead, it arches its back to receive a caress of love. Is this the same cat? No. It's been changed. It's not the same frightened, hurt, hissing creature on the side of the road. And you know, as well as I do, what has made all the difference. Long ago, there was another man who stretched out his hands to care for all people. He did it for all who'd been rejected for all refugees by the roadside of life, for all those people who are hurt and hungry, ready to lash out. So this morning, 
in your hearts. Look at his face. Look at the wounded hands. Hands that are holes, still bleeding for this world this day. Such are the hands of salvation, the hands of love, and more importantly, acceptance. Hands extended this day to all who feel rejected and lost, hungry and thirsty. Is it not written, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world? Sir, they said, always give us this bread. And then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. Spirit, lift us, we pray. 
into your presence, whether we are at home or in this place, for we are bound together serving you with love and hope. And we all know that you are our God. It has been a long journey. And we need you more now than ever. We ask that you direct our hearts and minds towards you and fill us with your spirit, bringing peace and joy. You remind us that in this world, you are faithful and you carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew us and restore us and promise that you will give us rest. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May your living presence surround us and be within us as we partake of this sacrament in this place. And as we learn in our homes that you are present with us as this takes place. For we are all the body of Christ bound together. May your spirit bring peace to our hearts. And may it fill our tomorrows with hope. We ask this morning that our prayers are offered to Daniel Cox, known to those in this place, who's recovering from severe head injuries and brain surgery following an assault. We raise up Daniel and the Coxes to you now, Lord, and ask that you bring healing and wholeness. And in the silence, we name before God those for whom we offer our prayers this day. Lord, we especially think of those in our community, either in hospital or prevented from joining this worship in their home for whatever reason of illness, for those not present gathered with us this day. And we ask that you grant your healing grace to all who are the focus of our prayers this day. For you are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power amongst the people. With you, Lord, is the promise of life eternal. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are, who are weary, who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In Jesus' name, we share together the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we come to our, our service of communion, there will be no responses for you to share on the screen. I'm sure 
for many of you, you'll be repeating the words in your hearts and your minds wherever you are listening to this liturgy of communion. When the time comes, I will come out to you. Please remain seated. There will be no words of institution in front of you as you are used to. I will come back to the rail here and then I will say it and we'll all take the elements together. In this building or in our homes joined together in worship, we are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wherever you are, turn and look at someone next to you and share the peace with them, either through looking at them or if you are in a bubble, shake hands or however you want to share the peace. And at home, I'm sure you can look at people on the screen and share the peace together with them in your hearts. Lord and giver of every good thing, we bring to you bread and wine for our communion, our lives and our gifts for your kingdom, all for transformation through your grace and your love made known in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. So may the Lord be with us, for we lift up our hearts and we give thanks to the Lord our God because it is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. You created the heavens and earth and you formed us in your own image. And though we have sinned against you, your love for us was constant. And you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the savior of the world, sharing our human nature. He was born of Mary. He was baptized in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and by deed and was put to death on the cross. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him in glory, and through him you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us all, wherever we are, to be your people, a community of faith. So with angels and archangels, and all the choirs of heaven, we join in that triumphant hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And holy God, we praise you. It's on the night in which he was betrayed, our Savior Christ took bread. Gave you thanks. And broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice, we offer ourselves to you now in praise and with thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Send down your Holy Spirit, Lord, that these gifts of bread and of wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole of creation to your eternal kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. 
Amen. And we will break and share this bread to share in the body of Christ. Although we are many, some physically apart this morning, we are one body because we all share in this one bread. And for those of us not in this place, we ask, Lord, of your blessing, that the Spirit be present with all listening to this service and sharing in worship of your holy name. May your Holy Spirit rest upon them, bringing them peace, calmness, joy, confidence, that we are held by you this day and all days. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us all. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of this world, grant to us peace. For Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger. And those who believe shall never thirst. Close our service again, calling on the Holy Spirit to help us meet the challenges that we face in the coming days. In number 370, breathe on me, breath of God. 370. when you sit at the feet of our Lord and listen. Times of stillness when you know the Lord is beside you. May Christ's love and peace flow as a gentle stream through your very soul. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us always and remain with us always.